Hello guys, welcome back to the second episode of Drive to Survive. Uh, I'm Marvel and let's get right into the second episode. We've got to get back. So that all 10 teams have a chance, not a guarantee, but a chance of survival. Yeah, Red Bull doesn't have to worry about survival, they're backed. Yeah, quiet. Do you think there's a scenario where you could even just get 15 races in? So what does that then look like? To Austria, then Hungary, Europe, Middle East, global. It would be nice to know on which day this was and how much later it was revealed because I'd like to know how much further ahead the teams know that before all of us did. Sounds like everything's under control. All right, good stuff. There is good news coming out of the world of Formula One as the racers dust off their cars and get underway with the Austrian Grand Prix. The British Formula One Grand Prix will go ahead in July. Uh, morning, Netflix. Back for more. <laughs> Two meters this year, though. You've got to keep your distance. Your call is unable to take your call. Please leave your message after the tone. Drivers, it's a problem. It's probably too early in the morning. I'm just grateful that we're we're racing, and I think you know to get the series up and running. I think it's been a phenomenal effort. You know, I've had ten weeks sitting at home, not doing anything. The teams are going to be race rusty on the strategy, on the on the pit stops, and I think that this year will create some different scenarios. But it feels like Mercedes could be vulnerable this year. <laughs> well, this hasn't turned out well. But this year, in 2021, they look vulnerable. I think this prediction goes as well as Christian's. I can't imagine a, a world where Mercedes isn't constructor or world champion <laughs> this year, so yeah. Let's hope for the best. Let's hope for an exciting season. I think this work from home thing has been taken to an extreme in marketing. Work from home. <laughs> it's so weird to be in an empty office. Hey Susie, how are you? All the panelists hey Christian, how are you? Good, you got Toto doing the housework. And then the last thing, there's still an article. No time to know. <laughs> Are they talking some some important bit and <laughs> Christian just shouting through it all <laughs> some some banter? I love to see that. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing Toto again and and hopefully giving him a harder time this year. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we are fierce competitors, but I personally actually look forward to the racing itself. Forget all the rest around it. Um, let's just race. <laughs> Christian doesn't understand it. Look at that eye roll. <laughs> He's like, no, I want to beat you. Home sweet home. I'm sorry, you will have to wait your waiting lot. Let's just run it out. <laughs> We've seen this in the last episode. <laughs> Classic Lando Norris. Would you like to say hello to the fans? Oh, we've actually got, we got fans here. Yeah. Hi, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of weird, to be honest. Morning. Hey. Hello. I'm really impressed by this. This is awesome. I think you're on mute. Wait for can it. Can you hear me? Yep. What's going on? You can ask me a question, or I can just stand here and dance or something. I don't know. As you. <laughs> I want to see you dance, please. Ah, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Danny Rick with some dance. What? Wait, what? We don't see him dance. Missed opportunity, Netflix. Missed opportunity. The Austrian Grand Prix is an absolute marker in the ground that, you know, Formula One is open for business again. I'm actually disappointed that we don't see him dance. 
let's just wait it a few more seconds maybe they cut it in afterwards but that's a shame <laughs> where is her mask like what the fuck <laughs> I hate these people wearing their masks like this just put it over your nose. What the fuck is wrong? It doesn't it doesn't help when you put it under your nose. And they're filming this and putting this on television. Bad. <laughs> Bad Sky Sport. I remember. Hey, I, I, I don't know what to do. Do I do I touch you? Do I? Good. You've been okay. Christian, to give him credit, uh, he came into the sport very young. Was put. He, without a beard, Christian looks completely different. <laughs> he has this this foolish look, but with his beard, he's like f James Bond villain or something like this. In charge of the Red Bull Formula One team and won four championships. Red Bull ruled. So in 2013. He hasn't got a beard and now he has one and they don't win. Maybe Christian has to sacrifice his looks and shave his beard off to win another championship. I think that's how it works. Pretty sure. The roost for four years and then along came Toto and Mercedes and stole their ball. Look, Toto is also shaved. Confirmed. Only team chefs with with a shaved face can win a world championship and christian wants it back it's incredibly hard to keep that level of winning consistency and all credit to mercedes because we managed it for four years they've managed it for six but inevitably at some point that comes to an end yeah yeah Ho hopefully it would be boring like in 20 years if Mercedes win, wins every every championship until then. Max is arguably the hottest property currently in Formula 1 at the moment. Of course he is. He's like 23 and considered the second best driver on the grid, so yeah. The thing about Max is he's got this m magic dust about him. The dream is to win a fifth world championship to make Max the youngest driver's world champion ever. Three, two, one. Alex is Max's teammate. <laughs> That's their only thing they have to say about Alex. They're like, yeah, Max, the hottest property uh, in F1 at the moment. He needs to be uh, the youngest world champion. <laughs> and then Alex is Max's teammate, who is <laughs> going to be the youngest world champion. <laughs> Time on the track. It's the longest time I've been out of a race car in what well, since I started go karts back in 2007. Things are pretty much just playing games and streaming on Twitch, and that was pretty much my life. Now it was just so much excitement. <laughs> I think out of all the F1 drivers, Norris had the best time off with his Twitch stream, with his support. He's just popping off. So is the goal. Did it feel quick? No, it's alright. Yeah. It was, I mean, it's fast. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but like, it, it's alright. <laughs> 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 that black Mercedes also looks very nice. I prefer to the AMG one they have this the year. Oh, that's. Interesting. Yeah, it's banned now and I don't think it has any effect at all in the season. Mercedes without the dust system would be as strong as Mercedes was last season with the dust system, so yeah, I don't think it made any difference at all. Toto obviously very happy. This year at preseason testing, I don't think he looked that happy. 
Hello. How are you doing? God, Monty looks so different with his haircut. Okay, I thought they were just... Christian didn't know he would be filmed and he was just casually calling his family but as we see in this shot the camera is right behind him, he knows that but from the shot before that it, it seems like they were just spying on him which would be creepy <laughs> So you got your DAS on the car? The I know Well, don't take it personally <laughs> but uh, we'll protest it today and then this down to the FIA, they're either happy or they're not it's clever, that was look. Hats off, full respect. I think I would shit myself if I pulled the steering wheel and it went like that. <laughs> Christian, he's a good operator. He likes to have these little war games between us. But the rivalry is big. <laughs> Where in this rivalry fits Ferrari because obviously this season they weren't close to the top three but for the last I don't know ever since Michael Schumacher the last years they were always top three maybe once they weren't but yeah so if there is obviously this total Christian relationship where they fight each other and they have this uh, rivalry where does Mattia Binotto fit in because I can't see him <laughs> casually talking about this with Christian or Toto so quite interesting What was the response like to the protest stuff? I think from a fan perspective people are just saying Red Bull are just responding to getting whipped on the track yeah. you know because that's what they see so. Yeah, and <laughs> that's what happened. Like Christian admits, it's a uh, genius track, and it was uh, it was very clever. So it's great, great invention. <laughs> so why why wouldn't they they just protest because they see a disadvantage and not because it's illegal or something like this? If 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 like Williams invented this technique. Nobody would uh, would even notice it. He did have a chance last year in Brazil, but it all went a bit wrong. <laughs> you can say it like this. Yeah, it was a foolish move from Hamilton. It was painful, frustrating, but honestly if I did it again I would have been more aggressive. <laughs> I know what I need to do and now it's more about just getting them results in. Okay Alex, you'll get one side clap. Yeah. Right, the moment of reckoning then. No lift off turn one. This car still feels very nervous. Work the brakes. Yeah, I think the pre-season testing were Red Bull obviously spun wasn't good for for Alex Albon and his confidence in the Red Bull because as you can see here it still feels very nervous because of the spins in preseason testing he thinks that I th that's my guess that's my take on it but I can imagine he wouldn't feel safe in that car which spins so easily and it's harder to go to the limit if you can't trust the car. Oh, Lewis Hamilton. Oh, and someone's had a problem. And it's yeah, Bottas. Bottas. Going off into the gravel. Yellow flag out there. Does that mean Hamilton has to back off? Yeah. If Lewis Hamilton drove through a yellow flag zone without slowing down, <laughs> will be 
considered to be dangerous and the penalty will be severe. There's your yellow flag, I can see one. Hamilton rounds the final corner. So it looks like Lewis's time stands. He takes second place behind Bottas on pole. So Bottas, Bottas outqualified Hamilton in the first race. I, ca I couldn't remember that, but yeah, I think it's kind of stereotypical for Bottas to be strong at the first, maybe three, four races and is equal in points after these, but then Lewis Hamilton takes another step and just dominates the, the rest of the season. There is no comeback for Bottas in, since 2017. It was always like the same pick, just Bottas strong at the beginning and then at the end, you s you've seen it last year it's at Sakir he was nowhere close to Josh Russell who was the first time in this car so yeah it's kind of crazy to see how his performance constantly gets worse in the car and the opposite happens to Lewis Hamilton he just gets stronger over over the season a Mercedes team that is so strong so dominant you have to exploit every opportunity that you possibly can. Yeah, but I think that's fair that they do that because I think because it's in the regular more. So why why shouldn't they use this to get an advantage or get get things straightened up, get things right? We've got to push. He's like a dog with a bone, he won't let it go. We found some more footage really that FIA didn't have, which is crazy, of his camera in his car. Oh, I'm starting P3! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Where's Hamilton? P10? I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> Maybe thanks for the <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lando <laughs> puts out a tweet. <laughs> I think Christian Horner. The timing of it was brilliant. Because Mercedes had already made their way to the grid and were setting up Lewis Hamilton's grid spot from his original place. Wait, what? <laughs> if you're gonna pull the rug from under your biggest rival, you wait till the last minute. <laughs> That's really funny. It's time to do it because that'll really ruffle him now. Anyway. Good job. Christian likes to rumble around a little bit, but I think we are doing it a bit different. It kind of seems like Mercedes is this correct German institution and Red Bull are like this kind of play dirty, use mind games kind of guys. We concentrate on ourselves. We don't look too much left and right. We do the talking on the track. The thing is, they don't have to look left and right because they're 20 seconds in front of every other car. So yeah, they don't have to watch out. And it slides out and away we go. Lando, you have to get more aggressive. Now Alex is on your toes. Be careful. <laughs> like he did, he doesn't notice it. Yeah. So against Hamilton, he doesn't have any chance. Look how far Bantos is away from the start already. Oh yeah, I can remember. It's the first race. Oh 
pushing every button. Engine 9, position 2. Engine 9, position 2. We keep saying the fucking thing. I can't change it. How can this happen? Okay, Max. Box, please. Box. Gutting. Here's our championship hopeful. We're in a great position in the opening race in our home Grand Prix. Okay, so he's fuck this. And he's out. Yeah. Rough start to the season. First, yeah, first up. Punch in the guts for the whole team. And it was a blessing for Hamilton as well because you don't race. want to have. We put him on to a new set of tires for the last stint. Good stop, which amazingly Mercedes didn't cover. That gave him a significant tire advantage for what would almost certainly be his first Grand Prix victory. He was the quickest car at this point. much ahead. It's like so unlucky for Alex Album to get in these positions where he loses and Hamilton just keeps driving both times. He was about to take his first Formula One podium and now he's tumbling down to last place. <laughs> I'm getting pissed off just seeing this one. We're on the final lap of the race. Can Norris find the lap of his life to get within five seconds of Lewis Hamilton? I could really push Some Lando stands right there. 100%. Come on. It's incredible and insane. And all of a sudden, I go over the line. Lando Norris with the fastest lap of the race. Did he do it or not? Lando, the gap to Hamilton was 4.8. That's a podium. It's like a roller coaster of emotions because I still feel so bad for for Alex Albon, but to see Lord Norris, a friend of his, succeed in the same race just a few seconds after Alex lost the potential victory is yeah, puts puts me in a in a weird emotional state. You. So like Hagen is loud now. There's Alex. Not just hard luck. It was like. It'll come. It'll come. He did nothing wrong today. It's like Lando. It's gonna come. You know, it'll just make you enjoy it even more when it does. I Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like your number two Fuck you. Fuck you. Everyone's expecting you to win. So, yeah, next episode is about Bottas, Hamilton, is gonna be on Alex. and uh, Mercedes yeah, overall. You, uh. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you see you in the next one. And bye.